Thank you, everybody. Um, welcome to the Borderscape Project Seminar Series. And um, this is uh, the last seminar for this, uh, this moment. Um, the Port Escape project is a project that investigated the state, how the state formation uh, changed the social spatial landscape of the Nile First Cataract region in the fourth and third millennium BC. Uh, the project has been uh, uh, founded by the Norway Grants, working together for a green, competitive and inclusive Europe, and by the National Science Center of Poland through the Paul School. Um, it is hosted by the Institute of Mediterranean and Oriental Cultures of the Polish Academy of Sciences, and I'm the PI. If you want to know more about the Borderscape project, you can uh, go and check our website, where there is also our brand new uh, web GIS, so that you can check what, you know, part of our results of the project results. Um, you can go also to check our uh, social media pages or you, you can write, you know, an email if you have specific questions. Um, as I said, this is the last one of six uh, uh, seminars that we are going to put all online. The, the others are already on the YouTube channel of our institute. So please go and check them if you haven't seen them, if you haven't watched them. Today's uh, seminar is presented by Dr. Irene Fostenmuller and is titled Komombo in the Third Millennium and its importance in the first Upper Egyptian Nome and beyond. So I want to share with you some information about Dr. Irene who is the head of the Austrian Archaeological Institute, the Cairo branch of the Austrian Academy of Sciences, and the scientific counselor of the Austrian Embassy in Egypt. She studied at the University of Vienna, where she also received a PhD and an habilitation on research topics related to the settlement of Tel El Daba and the Nile Delta in general. She specializes in settlement archaeology and she has been working in Tel El Daba since she was a student, basically. Um, she also is a specialist of landscape archaeology and the archaeology of ancient Egyptian borders. Irene has directed the excavation of Tel El Daba since 2009, and since 2017, she has been the director of a joint Egyptian-Austrian project investigating the ancient town of Komombo, expanding her interest to the southern Egyptian border. Irene has collaborated with many other archaeological projects in Egypt and abroad, and has published extensively on her research, which also includes the study of uh, uh, Egyptian pottery. So, Irene, I think that um, I can leave the floor to you. Irene, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Maria, for the kind introduction and uh, I tried to share my presentation now. Good evening and many thanks to the organizers, especially Maria Gatto for allowing me to give a presentation here as a part of the Borderscape uh, seminar. And I'm very happy to be able to present our research project on the town of Komombo. Komombo has been a new project mm -hmm. since 2017 as part of our research program on urban and settlement archaeology in Egypt. The site is located around 45 kilometers north of Aswan. Modern Komombo is an industrial town. It's away from the Nile and it's dominated by the sugar industry and located directly on the railway Nile line. Uh, Komombo is one of the main tourist centers in Egypt. Before our work, the site was known for the Ptolemaic Temple, which is a double temple dedicated to two deities, the falcon-shaped god Hareris, Horus the Elder, and the crocodile-shaped god Sobek. Uh, this project is a joint Egyptian-Austrian mission in cooperation with the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities. And on this slide, you see our first fact-finding visit to Komombo, which was in late autumn 2017 with Pamela Rose on the right side and Wolfgang Müller from the Swiss Institute. 
um, and our um, motor cooperation partner up till Menem. Uh, like all major towns in Pharaonic Egypt, uh, ancient Komombo is located on the Nile. Uh, the plain of Komombo covers an area of around uh, 450 square kilometers to the east of the Nile. And in this, uh, in this part uh, of Egypt, the while is wider and bends to the east. The landscape changed considerably at the beginning of the 20th century when the British built the first Aswan Dam. And after that, the desert was converted into an agricultural area, as you see here. And then also the sugar processing industry began. The area, however, has been inhabited since the Paleolithic period. In Roman times, it was the metropolis of the first Upper Egyptian Nome, and in the periods before, the situation is less clear. But however, the town was already important in the Old Kingdom and also in the first intermediate period. Uh, Tetel, uh, which is protected as ancient land, covers an area of about six hectares. And the aim of our work is to do research on the town and its hinterland. The modern uh, Arabic name Komombo, which can be translated as the Hill of Ombo, is derived from the ancient Egyptian name of the town Nebut or Nebit, the Golden One. Uh, the meaning is, uh, of this name is not very clear. However, the town may have been the starting point for gold expeditions to the Eastern Desert and to Nubia. And at least in the New Kingdom, it was an important hub for these activities. And here you see a scene, uh, uh, the well-known text scene in the 18th dynasty, tomb of Rechmere in Luxor. And uh, or it, uh, officials from Komombo are depicted marked here in blue with gold rings. Uh, Komombo is situated in a strategic position to gain access to the eastern desert. On this slide, you see the wadis uh, in and near the watershed of Komombo, which are visible, uh, the Wadi Beze, the Wadi Tungash, Wadi Mitrik, Wadi Moelha, and Wadi Shait. And we know mining activities are in definite connection with Komombo. Those are known from inscriptions from the Old Kingdom and also from the New Kingdom. Uh, the earliest record of the name of the town of Komombo is first attested from the Old Kingdom. This seal impression was found during our current work. It bears the name of King Neferikare, uh, a ruler of the Fifth Dynasty. And you see here a reconstruction from three seal fragments made by uh, Philip Sayer and Lor Pantelacci, who are working on the seal impressions of the Old Kingdom and the First Intermediate Period. And this is the earliest known record of the ancient name of Komombo, Nebut, and the only example from the Old Kingdom. The owner of the seal was on the staff of a Perschena located at Komombo. His title can mostly uh, likely be reconstructed as an overseer or an overseer of the scribes of the Perschena. Uh, the Peshena is a royal administrative facility, and the inscription indicates that the Peshena was part of the institution of the royal repast. Before that, the earliest evidence for the uh, toponym was uh, from the first intermediate period, from the tomb of Anhtifi in Mwala, which lies about 140 kilometers north of Komombo. Anhtifi was a local ruler or a warlord of the third Upper Egyptian Nome who conquered the second and first Upper Egyptian Nome in the south and campaigned against the coalition of Thebans and Abidines in the north. And Komombo is listed in his tomb in a series of toponyms. And in these inscriptions, Anhtifi says, I breathed life into the gnomes of Hierakompolis and Etfu and an interesting and the towns of Elephantin and Ombos. And he claims that he saved the inhabitants of these places from famine. Further epigraphic evidence from Komombo comes from an elite cemetery from the uh, very early 12th dynasty. And you see here the high official Sebek Hotep and his wife Nofru Weret uh, depicted. These limestone blocks come from a tomb 
which had been discovered by a Prussian expedition of the Papyrus Company of the Royal Museums of Berlin under the direction of Friedrich Zucker. And this cemetery is located about 1.5 kilometers east of the temple. Unfortunately, we don't know exactly where uh, we have not found the cemetery yet. Most probably it is destroyed nowadays. Some of these finds are now in the Egyptian Museum in Berlin, and they are being studied as part of a collaboration with Jana Helmbold Doyer, who is now in Leipzig. And in 2020, we had the opportunity to start the documentation. Here you see our photo team, and we are very grateful to all the staff of the museum to make the stay very good for us. The Tell of Komombo is depicted in the famous description de l'Egypte, which was a result of Napoleon Bonaparte's Egyptian campaign. Uh, in contrast to the research in, in sites in the Delta, Nile Delta, there are numerous travel logs, paintings and photographs describing and depicting the sites in Upper Egypt. And one of the most famous shown here was taken by David Roberts in 1838. But unfortunately, most of these images are very similar. Usually they are taken from the Nile and showing the temple ruins, but not the surrounding ruins. The first uh, uh, systematic archaeological work at Komombo, which included also the transformation of the tell, was carried out by the French archaeologist Jacques de Morgan at the end of the 19th century AD. And for us, the most important for our research is the survey uh, by Barry Kemp and Michael Jones in 1979. And Kemp was the first to identify the pharaonic town of Komombo. He suggested that the Ptolemaic temple was built on Old Kingdom and first intermediate period layers, and he was able to locate part of the Old Kingdom in this uh, here marked in red, reddened earth area. And during this survey, the structures at the tell were still very well preserved and high, as you can see here on the right slide, uh, which are the remains of Old Kingdom and first intermediate power period town structures. And this image, like all the other unpublished images, were very kindly provided uh, by Barry Kemp to us as a present for the Institute. Uh, further excavations in the Tel area were carried out by our Egyptian colleagues from the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities, who excavated outside of the temple between 1986 and 2014. Major changes to the site, which also affected the tell, took place in the 2000s when Dr. Zai Hawass developed a new site management concept for Komombo, and the Crocodile Museum was also built at this time. Essential to our work is the uh, is just the research of the recent groundwater lowering project carried out by USAID in collaboration with the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities, which ran from 2017 to 2019, so parallel to our beginnings of our project. And as part of this project, a pumping system was constructed around the tell and the temple to protect the temple from water damage caused by groundwater. And this has increased our knowledge of the history of the Komombo site immensely. It revealed that the Ptolemaic temple had a predecessor from the New Kingdom, from the 18th and 19th dynasties, and that the temple was built over the town of the Old Kingdom and the first intermediate period. As part of the groundwater lowering project, boreholes were also drilled in the area of the Tell, which are of interest to us for the reconstruction of the ancient landscape and the course of the Nile. And excavations in the northwestern area of the site have verified the existence of an old kingdom settlement at Komombo at least as early as the fourth dynasty. And the fourth dynasty old kingdom pottery workshop was discovered by this project. This workshop included several pits, 
a limestone potter's wheel and a mold used to make pottery vessels. You see here to the left an example of these pits with a rounded hammerstone in situ, and to the right the potter's wheel made of limestone also in situ. In these finds we present the oldest documented example of a pottery workshop in Egypt until now. We began our work in November 2017 with the setup of a measuring system and the recording of the visible architectural structures by GPS in the entire Tel area. And on the right slide, uh, you see our surveyors, Christian Kurze and Astrid Hassler. Uh, Pamela Rose carried out a survey on the southern edge of the Tel to investigate the settlement remains and their dating in this area for future work. And she could uh, show that there were massive changes in this area of the town in the late Ptolemaic and early Roman period. And she could also identify layers of the later Old Kingdom and the first intermediate period. A magnetic survey was carried out in collaboration with Thomas Herbig from the University of Warsaw and the Polish Academy of Sciences, a long-standing research partner of mine. And the results of the survey clearly show structures from the pharaonic town in the north of the Ptolemaic temple, which extend into the area of the temple to the south. And I will come back to this a bit later. Uh, the extension of the settlement area appears clear. The site was surrounded by water on all sides, which means that Komombo was an island at the time, similar to other Egyptian towns such as Elefantine, Etfu, and of course also Tel Edaba. This is here a very preliminary chronological table showing the periods of occupation, which are so far attested at the site from the early dynastic period, the second half of the second dynasty to modern times. However, the site is not settled continuously so far, we have no evidence of settlement uh, for the Middle Kingdom and uh, the Second Intermediate Period, and also no settlement activity between the early Islamic period and the late 19th century AD. Uh, besides others, two areas were chosen to investigate the pharaonic town. Um, one was the area between the Crocodile Museum and the Ptolemaic Temple, area S9. And the area on the north edge of the still existing Tel, area S11. Uh, this photo was taken from the north towards the temple and gives an overview of the complex stratigraphy of the Tel in area S9. Here the main layers are marked summarily and in the background you see the enclosure wall of the temple, the modern enclosure wall of the temple and the temple itself. This is now the latest general plan of the area. We worked already in, in, uh, in uh, January and February this year. So this is the up-to-date plan. In the north you have a cemetery of the later Old Kingdom and the first intermediate period. In the south, there is an administrative area of the later first intermediate period. And this is enclosed by a massive wall and spatially separated from the cemetery. And the administrative area consists of uh, two uh, storage complexes with a corridor running in between. The administrative dis district consists of at least 25 rooms, as far as we have found. And uh, we uh, excavated the central part of the complex. Uh, the building certainly continues to the east and to the west and also to the south. And there is no uniform pattern in the layout of the rooms. The rooms vary in size. Some of these rooms have been found to be covered. We found niches with lamps. A second floor is very unlikely due to this thinness of the walls, which are probably thatched with a wood and straw. Most of these rooms contain silos. Until now, we have found 23. Uh, many of them are double shelled with double walls and filled with ash between the walls, which was used most likely used for disinfection. The silos again, like the rooms, they vary in size. 
they were most probably used to store grain and they were accessible from above. Access to the rooms was strictly regulated. Uh, the red arrows show entrances or the entrances we have found. In some areas, ceilings were found in connection with or near the en these entrances, and this shows that the entrances were also sealed and blocked. The structure is exceptionally well preserved and at least two meters high, so one can walk through nowadays. Uh, the mud structures were secondarily burned to a bright red color, as you see here on both slides. These layers of reddened and burnt soil are visible all over the tell, and these were already observed by Barry Kemp. And also the groundwater project uh, detected them during their work within the temple. And they were seen also during our recent survey, uh, which was done by PEM in the northeastern part of the tell. However, these reddish layers do not occur everywhere on the tell, but they are limited to the immediate vicinity of the temple precinct and they are not recorded for the north. Uh, Barry Kemp recently in, in Festschrift Seidelmeier referred to this phenomenon as an underground combustion that was due to accidental or perhaps natural causes. However, this seems a bit doubtful. Uh, the burnt layers are distributed over a quite large area of the tell. In the case of accidental combustion, one would perhaps rather assume it was a local event, uh, but here the fire seems to be due to systematic and uh, intental, in, intentional destruction. Um, it's also noticeable that these burnt layers mark the beginning of a hiatus in occupation. So a uh, very interesting feature. This year is our latest 3D model created uh, with the SFM, also with computer uh, program structure from motion uh, by Mario Berner. And you can see here the complex with the silos and marked in red the cemetery, which was built directly outside of the residential area. One of these rooms in the southeast of the, of the administrative district is particularly interesting. Here there is a silo that has been preserved completely intact and not yet excavated by us. It even has the a rectangular access hatch. And in a later phase, the room was used as a storage room in which pottery was stacked and in total more than 400 ceramic vessels were found. Most of them smaller uh, night clay dishes with remains of animal bones with rodents in between. It appears that the uh, dirty dishes were deposited here and the room was then no longer used and um, the pottery was left in this room. To the south, separated from it by a corridor, corridor, there is another storage complex. The walls here, interestingly, are much wider and more massive. And this complex continue, continues into the courtyard of the Ptolemaic Temple. And it was also discovered by our Egyptian colleagues in 2019 when they made excavations for an open air museum within the temple area. The cemetery of the later Old Kingdom and the first intermediate period is uh, uh, located to the north of the administrative complex. This cemetery extends to the north, so it's quite a large uh, cemetery. It was also discovered during a salvage excavation, which we conducted uh, northwest of the Crocodile Museum, this TP27. Uh, we uh, conducted it together in collaboration with the Groundwater Lowering Project. The cemetery consists of at least two faces, most probably more. Uh, the older one is in green and the later in brown. Uh, the younger face consists of several large master bus with main walls and the individual rooms are separated by thin walls. In the east, there is a large master bus tomb with a superstructure and at least three entrance shafts, which could be identified. Unfortunately, the eastern part uh, is destroyed by modern pits and modern activity. Inside the burial chambers, 
The individual burials are covered by burial vaults made of mud bricks, very typical Egyptian type vaults. The burials are squeezed into the chambers with each individual burial covered by such a vault. The deceased are buried on the left side, usually with the head to the north and facing east, and the state of preservation of the bones is very poor. Uh, the tombs were heavily robbed. The only grave goods found were ceramic vessels. In this case, the deceased was laid on a wooden board that was partly painted red. And this is a quite unusual burial. This is the only example where the body is placed in a pit and is in a flex position. It was found in front of the entrance to one of the large uh, master bus, Complex 2, which was no longer in use at the time. Uh, the anthropological investigations are being carried out by Jan Novacek and uh, Christina Schel Novacek, and they were able to have a look already on the bones and to determine that uh, in this case, this was a male bur uh, burial, an adult, 25 to 40 years old, with traces of inflammation on the legs and textile remains on the left upper arm. Uh, between 2018 and 21, we made a deep trench in the area of the cemetery to clarify the stratigraphy of the site. And there we found a settlement dating from the early Old Kingdom below the cemetery. The cemetery from the late Old Kingdom and for earlier First Intermediate period lies on massive leveling layers that overlay the settlement of the old, of earlier Old Kingdom. And these leveling layers date to the middle of the Fifth Dynasty. In this Old Kingdom settlement, there is a dense sequence of layers and views of the site. And here you can see the last phase of the settlement, uh, what we call structure one. Um, and this structure dates to the early to the middle 5th dynasty. Uh, left you have a semicircular limestone installation at the entrance to structure 1 from the northwest. And the limestone fragment was built into the wall of the structure. And on the right, uh, the, there are interior walls which were plastered with mud. And several layers of ash and charcoal and floor levels run against the walls. We also have uh, evidence of settlement activity during the fourth dynasty. Here there were, we could excavate part of a room. One of the mud floors was painted yellow and the entrance was reinforced with a wooden threshold. Uh, the building dates from the middle of the fourth dynasty, more or less the reigns of Hufru and Chefren. The earliest layers uh, date from the late second and early third dynasty. And this phase does not contain agri any agricultural remains. Its la layers of settlement debris are thrown over the edge of the Nile or a channel, or perhaps a channel of the Nile. On the right slide, you see the north section of this chest trench, and there the layers are tipping towards the west and the modern bank. The layers are deposited on the thick mud deposit of the ancient Nile bank, and at that time the Nile was much further in the east than in later periods. In 2023 and in this year 2000, 2024, another area of the tell was investigated, area S11 on the northern edge. Uh, based on the geophysical investigations, uh, we assumed that the edge of the town and the bank of the Nile uh, should be located here. This is clearly not the case. Uh, we found the town quarter of the early Old Kingdom in this area. And this area was most probably also an industrial zone at the time. The area is covered by a massive sand dune of windborne sand, more than three meters high. In the sand, very simple mud brick structures were found. There was a sequence of four New Kingdom horizons with these mud brick features laid on the sand. We had a circular structure, three semicircular mud brick structures, as well as possible mud brick walls. And associated with these structures was pottery dating to the New Kingdom, to the later 18th dynasty, 
and this consisted mainly of simple jars and bowls. Uh, this pottery is studied by Pamela Rose and she had a chance to have a look at it during this season. And uh, she, she, she suggests that it probably comes from a settlement somewhere close to this area. This is for us very exciting because it's for us the first evidence for settlement in the later 18th dynasty at Komombo. Beneath the New Kingdom structures at the depth of four meters below the modern surface, and you see the sandbags, so we had to, to put that the uh, section does not fall in and breaks in, uh, there lies the quarter of uh, the earlier Old Kingdom. Uh, you see here the uppermost structures of mud brick walls uh, in this slide. The dating so far goes from the earlier 4th dynasty to the earlier 3rd dynasty. However, this area has not been fully excavated, so there is a possibility of finding even older layers. The whole terrain is sloping towards the south. The structures are built in a very dense sequence and partly cut into one another, which shows that the area was extensively used over a continuous period of time and that we have several building and using phases which are represented here. The architecture consists of several rooms and courtyards. It's very difficult to say in some cases if it's a room or not because it's just a small glimpse and a small area excavated for the moment. Uh, the southeastern part of the trench was dominated by a large number of shallow rounded pits, many of them lined with a layer of solid clay material. And uh, to the west of these uh, pits, uh, we found a silo. Interesting, this silo was not built with mud bricks, but only with mud. And this uh, silo was also built on top of a half circle of pottery shirts, mostly bread molds. Other pottery remains, again bread molds, were vaguely laid out in a pattern on the same surface. And this seems to be that there could have been more silos that were later destroyed by pits. Uh, the wall next to it showed strong signs of continuous burning. Uh, the bricks were secondarily burned. And this again might indicate that there was an installation perhaps used for bread making. Below these features are earlier structures dating from the early third dynasty. Uh, so far only the upper layers of this space have been excavated. Uh, in this uh, in this period, in this phase, we, uh, there are two large vessels, each about 80 centimeters in diameter, which were de deposited in the southeast or southwest corner of the westernmost part of the trench. And only the rims of these vessels are currently visible, but we plan to excavate their next season in Charlotte. We found bread molds really in abundance until now we have found over a thousand to date and this overwhelming presence of this bread mold suggests that the building or this uh, here in this area the architecture in this area is connected or might be a bread making facility uh, that far exceeded the needs and the possibilities of a normal household so here on the right side you see this uh, uh, bread mold um, uh, bread molds etc as far as the pottery at Komombo is concerned, in the Old Kingdom and in the first intermediate period, Egyptian pottery is the most common. Of the non-Egyptian pottery, Nubian pottery is numerous. As can be seen here on the, on the left, we have it from, from the Old Kingdom until the later periods. Imports from outside the Nile Valley are very rare. On the right, there are two fragments from the early Old Kingdom possibly either from the Levant or Syria, it's not clear yet. A very important category of finds uh, from all kingdom settlements is ceilings with impressions of cylinder seals. And this uh, input I am grateful uh, Philip Sayer has provided me with. Uh, uh, these uh, ceilings are studied by, Philip, by him, by Philip Sayer and Lor Pantalacci. 
And we can say that after seven years of excavating at Komombo, our database counts now around 2,200 seal impressions. About 1,700 of them date to the Old Kingdom. And this is a huge amount of sealing. And this is due to our archaeological method that we try all excavated material and sieve it thoroughly. So evidently such high quality quantities of uh, seal impressions shed also a light on how much textual ma material must have been lost during all the excavations. And this is generally the only textual material from all settle kingdom settlements we have, except for the rare findings of papyri, which we will never, uh, which is very unlikely we would find in Komombo in these layers. Uh, the seal impressions provide us with archaeological record with an additional textual dimension, a dimension that helps us to understand which people used them and how spaces were used. For the area S9 North, the evidence of the seal impression corresponds to the archaeological stratigraphy and fits also the pottery dating. The inscriptions allow for pinpointing how the use of the area changed from the 2nd to the 5th dynasty. For the earliest stratigraphic phase that dates to the late 2nd dynasty, the seal inscriptions provide a very clear picture. Most ceilings were fixed on pots and impressed by people with the title Hemnesso, royal servant. This title is not much paralleled in other corpora of ceilings, but judging from the rich evidence of the Gabelline papyri, they testify of an agricultural provincial milieu, which is probably directly connected to the centralized royal administration. This changes now when the first architectural structures appear at the beginning of the third dynasty. From this phase onwards, we observe the evaluation of an old kingdom settlement quarter. And interestingly here, the seal impressions are quite homogeneous until the abandonment of the quarter during the later fifth dynasty. The most common title is Mitter and its female pendant Mitteret, which is a bit enigmatic uh, designation. According to Vivian Gallen calendar, the title may, might have been linked to producers that were responsible for delivering goods and agricultural products to larger towns of Komombo. Impressions of, uh, of seals of office, the sogenannte Amtssiegeln, are rare in this strata. But we found two fragmented ceilings that mention the name of King Haber of the Third Dynasty. And then the material changes a second time when the settlement is abandoned and the area is leveled for building a cemetery in the later Old Kingdom. Evidently, the material that was used for leveling uh, this area come, came from a royal institution that must have been located closely nearby. It contained high quantities of impressions made by seals of office, the Amtsiegel, with the names of the first three kings of the fifth dynasty, Usakaf, Zahore, and Nefairkare. For the borders, Cape Series, um, a small fragment from these layers might be especially important. Uh, quite certainly, its inscription shows the title Overseer of the Fortress, but unfortunately, the name of the fortress is too fragmentary to be read. But one can compare the ceilings of the overseers of the fortress of nearby Elephantina, an example of which you see at uh, the bottom right here. As for the ceilings of Area S11, they could only be studied briefly last year and this year by Philip. However, the material from S11 is already providing important insights in the different views of space of town quarters in the Old Kingdom. As in Area S9 North, the Old Kingdom settlement is covered by massive leveling layers. But in contrast to S9 North, uh, institutional seal impressions appear only rarely in S11. The examples we found so far mention the fourth dynasty kings Nofro and Kafren. Impressions of seals with royal names remain also rare in the town quarter below. 
Only one ceiling with a royal name in a well stratified context was found, and it mentions the name of the third uh, dynasty king, Necherichet, who is also known as Jossa in later times. And in front of the royal Serich, a goddess holding a scepter, a was scepter with a year sign on her head is depicted. Uh, this ceiling might have been fixed on a papyrus wrapped in a textile envelope. In contrast to the ceilings in from S9 North, the title Mitter is nearly totally absent in S11. Most seal owners bear the title name, uh, the title Scribe, Zecher, but also the title Gardener, Car Carno, appears on two ceilings where it is written with a quite uh, iconically a logogram. You see here a, a man carrying two pots that hang from a pole on his shoulder. So this is the gardener. And finally, I would like to show you a special find uh, among the archaeozoological remains, which are being examined by my colleague Alfred Garlick, the bones of a carapace of the African soft-shelled turtle Trironix was were found. And this freshwater turtle is carnivorous and can grow up to 100 centimeters in length. It was, according to Alfred, were quite common along the Egyptian Nile and is frequently also found in archaeological finds. And in Komombo, it is found in context, uh, context of the first intermediate period. Of course, such a project can never be done alone. So many thanks to the whole team, uh, to, the, uh, to the Ministry of Antiquities and Tourism, and especially our Egyptian partners and colleagues, and the local workers and specialists who came with us from the Eastern Delta to Komombo. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Irene. This is really amazing. <laughs> Uh, the new discoveries are really exciting. <laughs> Thank you. And um, do we have any questions? So you can raise your hand uh, or you can uh, write in the chat if you don't have. OK, Katerina. Yes, please go ahead. So, Irene, thank you so much. That was Sorry, that was really amazing. You have wonderful finds, and I can't wait for the uh, for all the continuation of your work, uh, especially the ceiling, ceiling impressions. Those are really, really amazing, especially the big scope of them. But I have a pottery question, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you have the really interesting, you know, uh, probably as you call it, the bread making facility. And you showed us the bread molds, but the, what is the like typological composition of the other Old Kingdom vessels that you find in the settlement? Is it the same or is it different? Uh, I mean, mostly, mostly it's uh, in, in, in S11, it's mostly bread molds. Um, um, there are a bit of beer jars, but very rare, and uh, some uh, discarinated bowls, but also very, very rare. So in S11, there is something very special uh, besides that. But you know better, Katarina, than me, uh, what you find normally, what we found is beer jars, bread molds, bread molds, beer jars. So it's uh, quite, um, yeah, <laughs> um, uh, that's, uh, that's the most common thing we found. And do you have, uh, if I can have follow up question with the bread molds, do you have any pot marks or, or any traces of, uh, of burning, firing on ice outside or something? Uh, we have traces of firing and we have mm -hmm. also tracing of, of finger, finger, this how you say this shaping and, and the smoothing. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as I know, pot marks in the net, but I have to admit that for S11, for example, we have not had a look on it, but uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, we have now a new pottery specialist who will work, uh, will start with us then, and she will have a, um, we can say now she, it's a she, and uh, mm -hmm. she will have a look then hopefully in, in November. But until now there, as far as I know, now there are, are not bookmarks here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Any more question? No? I have a question if uh, nobody else uh, jumps in. Uh, so apparently there was a fortress in Komombo. 
now we cannot say it's a fortress. We can say we have a seal impression uh, and there is a fortress uh, connected to fortress. Where this fortress is, we cannot say. OK, we have no other evidence or no other, let's say, uh, source that is mentioning a fortress in Colombo, right? OK, no, no, no. And this could also be Elephantine, it could be somewhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. indeed, yeah. Yeah, th th this is quite interesting. I mean, <laughs> yeah, the pity I mean, is that the name, there is no name uh, that the name is broken off, so it's. Uh, yeah, you can do much. So it was also an island like Elefantina, you said. Do you think that there was any other site or, or different kind of, let's say, habitation areas uh, surrounding the island, mm -hmm. maybe used yeah. in other ways for other functions? Yeah, clearly. Uh, um, Pam and I just have written a book which is in print and we, we did a nice reconstruction, which, uh, yes, uh, there are several outside of, of the, how is the core zone of, of Komombo, of the tell itself. Um, when you go to the south, there were Egyptian excavations in the 1980s where they found uh, uh, most likely Middle Kingdom Cemetery. Then it's clearly on the, on the West Bank, there was some activity. There is even nowadays, but you, of course, you know, there is this uh, Falcon Cemetery, which is from the New Kingdom. Um, so there's a lot of going on. There must be some contra ombos which uh, it's not clear where it could be, but uh, the site itself, it's clearly larger than only, uh, only this core zone, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, and on the, there's the cemetery, this elite cemetery on the eastern uh, edge of Komombo, somewhere out of the tell. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. more, it's let's say larger, let's say the, mm -hmm. the, the area than uh, than just the yes. tell. Yes, clearly. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And do you have any idea of let's say the, the function of the city so early in the early old kingdom? So the first, uh, let's say evidence of the city. Uh, any connection, for instance, with the desert uh, or this kind of trade economy that is not directly related to, let's say, to the Nile Valley? Uh, well, there is this, this uh, mining activity in the desert uh, with connecting to gold. I think it's not by chance why Komombo was the golden one, not because it was a golden city, but uh, because it's somehow connected with these gold activities. But I think it's more complex as, as uh, also Philip shows now with the ceiling impressions that we have this change of suddenly official doing this and doing this. Then you have a royal repast somewhere in the vicinity in the fifth dynasty. Then you have, um, so it's a, it's, it's a change of, uh, I mean, it would be very interesting to do a survey mm. in the <laughs> in the Eastern Desert, yeah, yeah. because this is really a lacuna now. There is a lot going on now in, in Etfu area. The, if you do a lot, of course, in Aswan, but there's not so much. Uh, hmm. Around, yeah, around Komombo, yeah. that's true, yeah. that's true. Yeah. That's true. Any other question? Yes, he's uh, Professor Laskowska. Yes. Hello, Irene. Hello. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for this meeting with Komombo. Uh, I have a question concerning uh, pottery coming from Syria or Levant from the Second Dynasty. Yeah. Third Dynasty, yes, yeah, second yeah. Dynasty. Yeah. And do you have a, it, it's only one example of, of such pottery or it's do you have a lot of, of uh, it, it, could you explain me the way of of its uh, import? Uh, uh, well, we have two. Yeah, two pieces, I know that so it's I was very it's proud coming, to show this. But it's coming. Pieces. But it's coming. Uh, which way? This is very difficult to say. Like you have it in Elephantina, uh, um, where you also have this. This could be from. I I cannot tell you which. You, or where it comes from, I, I cannot tell you. <laughs> I, I we cannot even we show, we have to do some petrography. I cannot also tell you if it's now from uh, the Levant or from Syria. It's just, but I can tell you it's an import, and it was found in the context. Other all other things. Um, I don't know. Yeah. No, we don't know. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <this. laughs> Why do you think the town shifted uh, 
uh, during the, let's say at the at the end of the old kingdom, and then they built uh, um, the cemetery on top of the at least part of the old town. Is is yeah, there either, a specific I, reason? Yeah, either it shifted or it became smaller. We we cannot say no. Mm. But uh, sh uh, shifting towns are not so unusual. I mean, coming from my roots from Teledaba, the, also the settlement places shift when Elephantina shifts, or this is not so uncommon. But uh, the question is, does it shift or does it become smaller? That's right. Yeah, that's a good yeah, point. But, yeah. Yeah, but uh, both uh, hopefully we can clarify in. At the, yeah, later and years. Are you planning to to move also further uh, on on the other side of the temple and check there if yes, what's going on? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's yes, good, yeah. yes. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit of uh, not, I would say, not problem, but it's a bit of thing where to 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 continue because now with this um, S11 uh, possibly bakery or not bakery, uh, we should also extend the area. This is a very small trench, so it'd be nice to open larger. But it would be also interesting to go to the eastern part mm -hmm. uh, where, where Pam has made the survey because yeah. it's clearly there is first intermediate period on the other side. That's good, yeah. Any question, guys? Any comment? Yes, Michael, Michel. Michel Brown from Toulouse yes. in France. <laughs> I have a simple question. Uh, I noticed on several pictures uh, blue bags. Uh, they uh, they were only to stabilize the sand, or what is the yes. reason? Only okay. Yes, because it's it goes so deep and it's descent you and otherwise everything would collapse and uh, right. and they also hold very uh, within this month we worked uh, it already it becomes loose again so during summer it will not survive and then we have to take out the sand next season. Okay. Mm. Good evening. Thank you for this nice presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. In fact, yeah, that that's another good point. How do you manage to to keep uh, the area uh, protected because, as you said, the sandbags are, are not going to last longer. Well, you cannot because at the, at the beginning of this season, for example, we found the sand in the trench, so we take the sand out, enforce the area again, and continue. So you have to do all uh, that all the time. But, the, but yeah, but the work, work is a very skilled. So I thought it would take us a week, but they managed to do it within two days. Oh. Wow, yeah. that was impressive actually because it's very, it's quite uh, deep and large the area. So <laughs> yeah, that's good. So who else has? Uh, is anybody else who has questions? So, uh, do you have any new publication or a upcoming publication with these new uh, discoveries? Mm -hmm. uh, first, we, we did uh, the second preliminary report, which uh, will appear in the next uh, BFO. And then uh, Pam and I, in, in times of Corona, have written a book on Komombo free before our work, which should hopefully appear actually in uh, uh, quite soon. And then Pam, which because, uh, Maria, you said I should not talk about uh, later layers. And, uh, but you can. Um, I mean <laughs> because uh, we also Pamela excavated on top of the tell the the um, Anglo Egyptian four of the 19th century, and uh, there's also this, this is the next publication which uh, will be come out soon. So this is the plan. So that's good. Yeah, the yeah. more thing coming out. What mm. about the Nubian pottery? Of course, uh, I have to ask about the Nubian pottery. <laughs> Well, uh, at least we have not taken all photographs this season, and then we have to sit together and have a look and uh, and uh, and see. <laughs> that, that's good. Is it yeah. a lot or? Um, no, all together. It's um, well, it's not so much. I mean, when you compare it to the Egyptian, um, but this is uh, it's a very interesting thing because uh, when you compare it, uh, how much is it? I would say it's um, six hundred shirts. Six hundred. 
which is for, for this small area, not so bad. Uh, when you compare it percentage, as far as I got it, it's nearly from the percentage like Elephantine. But for example, from, from, uh, from the excavation of Wolfgang from the Swiss Institute of the Middle Kingdom, where I did the pottery, uh, he has much more Nubian shirts in, in Aswan. So I think one could oh, compare okay. to Komombo more or less to Elephantine uh, for the moment, at least for the percentage. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. So that, now that you have a better idea of, um, at least, you know, much better than before about Komombo in the Old Kingdom and also the, the first intermediate period, how would you put Komombo into the general, let's say, first uh, known uh, context and also the relationship with Elefantine. Uh, I remember that you mentioned that probably uh, Komombo may have been uh, this, the administrative center before Elefantine. Do you still uh, mm. think that, that that was a possibility? Mm. Well, it looks uh, it, what we can say that there is clearly uh, um, there is something going on since the uh, since the third dynasty, and it's uh, it's there was clearly some administrative activity uh, connected to to the royal residents in in the area of Memphis. I mean, we know so little about the old kingdom administration. So how would you would look like? But. Uh, it seems to, I mean, this was not, uh, uh, Detlef Franke already pointed out that he, uh, that he suggested that, uh, that the capital of the first upper Egyptian known before Elephantine uh, could have been in Komombo. We have the, uh, we have from, uh, but it's, it's, um, we we have um, from the Chapelle Blanche, for example, an example uh, or a, a text passage where there is mentioned a, a temple connected to a falcon god. So, in the only falcon god in this area would more or less be Komombo in in this period. Um, mm. interestingly, interestingly, however, from the uh, from the Coptos degree from the eighth dynasty. Uh, uh, Komombo is not li or uh, not listed as uh, as not listed at all. So there's Edfo and there's already Elephantine, and then uh, uh, latest with the beginning of the 12th or with the beginning of the Middle Kingdom, clearly there's the shift to uh, to Elephantine. Mm. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. 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 But do you think that at least an early an early time uh, the first nom could have been divided so uh, in a way Komobo have its own uh, let's say regional uh, importance different from Elefantine or Elefantine still being uh, perceived as um, outside Egypt as a fortress you know uh, not part of the the administration or part of the territory I, I would more tend to the to the second uh, theory that it's not part yet. It, I don't. Uh, there is no evidence that it was divided, uh, but there, there there is a kind of um, elephant in it still being outside. And then for political reasons, I mean, we know that uh, during Sassan Basra the first, he put new new officials in Elephantine, whom according to, again, I'm quoting that Le Franke might be, have been loyal to the king and not before. It's also interesting for Antrifi, for, for the inscription to see that um, uh, that there was uh, the, the uh, there uh, was Elefantine and Komombo where you uh, were attributed as towns, whereas the others were as gnomes like Etfo, etc. So this mm. is also makes one think, but I don't think it's a it's a division, but maybe uh, Elefantine was more out uh, of, of real Egypt. But who yes. can say? I mean, can say? Yeah. <laughs> not at the moment, at least not yeah. with. Uh, yeah. But it's it's interesting what you find. So it's yeah. uh, it's getting more yeah. information out of uh, this part of the first nome that is actually yeah. not very well known. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. As you said, a lot of uh, archaeological uh, investigation is going on around Elefantine. Mm. Uh, but not around Komombo, so yeah, it, indeed, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's an area that is not well known at all. So, mm. 
We need and more. the next puzzling thing is also what what is going on in the Middle Kingdom and in the second intermediate period, because we have evidence, we have finds. Uh, so there's clearly uh, the Middle Kingdom must exist somewhere and also the second intermediate period. We know it from museum finds, etc. But uh, yeah. So there's still a lot to do <laughs> for you <laughs> to work. <laughs> <laughs> so any other question? Uh, Nobody has any comment, any question? If we don't have any other question, I would like to thank Irene again. This was really, really interesting. And thank you, um, thank you also to everybody for joining us. And uh, we will continue the, the seminars in the future uh, with other colleagues joining us, uh, um, talking about ancient Egyptian borders. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Irene. Bye -bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.